Ladies and gentlemen, we've now got something very special. We're bringing fashion royalty to our stage. Melissa Oderbach. She's fantastic. She's a Gemini, and she's married to the devilishly handsome Nicholas DeSantis that we saw this morning. And she's also the mother of two, and she launched her celebrated label in 1999, redefining luxury resort wear. Vogue hailed her as the Ferrari of swimsuits. Today, her brand graces 60 countries and boasts numerous boutiques. Recognized repeatedly, including Retailer of the Year for three consecutive years, and with the Founders Award for her pioneering work, developing the first designer mastectomy swimwear line for breast cancer. Most recently, her dedication to philanthropy saw her receive an MBE from the Queen. Melissa has continuously fused luxury with ethics, and it's in this confluence of opulence and ethical responsibility where Melissa Oderbash's brand thrives. Now we have the privilege of delving deep into the world of sustainable luxury with a woman and entrepreneur whose designs are a staple in the wardrobes of royals and celebrities like Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, and the Kardashians, and whose legacy continues to shape the fashion landscape, the unparalleled Melissa Oderbash. Melissa, please join us. to Istanbul, Hoş mm. Galdiniz, is Thank you for having here. me. Can Wish I just say one thing first? Of course. Okay, so for 20 years, 25 years, I've been sent Turkish delights because people are asking me if I'm Turkish. So I didn't know because we tried to research it. And about three weeks ago, I did my 23andMe for my DNA. Uh -huh. And I am 28% Turkish. 28%? 28% Turkish. I finally know what, where, where Odebash comes from. There's an expression here which is, blessed is she who knows she is a Turk. Well, exactly. That's you. There you go. Well done. Melissa, I want to jump straight into it. I want you to share with us the moment you realized sustainability wasn't just a buzzword, but a non-negotiable in your brand. Well, sustainability today is used too freely. I find that everyone's sustainable, but they're not. Um, it's something that is a slow process. And the core of my business since I started is about sustainability. Because I believe in good, high quality that lasts forever. So I still have people saying, oh, I, I bought your swimsuit 20 years ago. I'm still wearing it today. That for me is sustainability, not buying too much but buying good quality that lasts. Okay, fantastic. Um, sustainability and luxury, they often seem at odds. How did you cultivate a, a mindset, a culture within your organization that saw them not as contradictions, but as, as collaborators, as companions? Well, you know, you have to stay with the times and luxury is is at the forefront. Luxury is what sets the trends, and it's the high street that follows the trends. So for me, you always, like, luxury should be the ones showing everyone else how to change your business, how to make it more sustainable. We're all in it together. But again, you can't, you can't ruin the core of your business to become all of a sudden sustainable because you're only as advanced as the people supplying you. Exactly. So it's a supp are the suppliers the breaks? Yeah, it's the suppliers that supply the fabrics and, you know. Well, when we talk about sustainable luxury then, it starts from an idea and then turns into a tangible product, it, it, resort wear, swimwear. Yes. 
Um, can you walk us through that journey of, of creation? Can you walk us through that place where it eventually becomes a sustainable piece? Well, I start by going to the archives in Lake Como. I'm very fortunate. They let me into all the archives of all the biggest brands that ever existed. And it's an incredible place. And I choose vintage fabrics. And then they walk me through on the process. So this has been over the last five years, how all the fabric companies are putting solar paneling, all the employees drive electric cars. And I try and make this, you know, it's also only so much a designer can do because it's also down to the client wanting to buy sustainable. So I walk them through, you know, they're now recycling scraps, which they never did before. So all scraps from extra fabric is being recycled, polyester is being recycled, and now the water is all being recycled. So it's saving a lot on energy. We're, they're doing everything that they can possibly do now to become more sustainable. So it doesn't start with the designer. It starts all the way down the line. With the supplier. With the supplier. And uh, you know, they're willing to listen to your ideas, to, to include it's not, these stories? I mean, of course, I think it's, you know, there's things like this where everyone gets up and talks and says, how can we all be, it's not just my business, it's anything from fake leather and cars. Um, we all have to be sustainable at once because it's a very costly process also to change all the machinery to become more sustainable. So it's, you know, I, you can only say so much like, oh, can you only show me? But already in a year and a half, fabrics have come so far along, it's incredible. Like sequence of dresses is one of the most like non-recyclable products. And now they're making sequence that gives the same effect of sequence out of plants as of a year ago. That never existed before. So it's technology that has to be at the forefront. And it's you as a designer who's insisting on the suppliers bringing you that product. Yes. Well, that's fantastic. So every ingredient within it is, is checked and balanced along the way. I've, I've done sustainable swimwear, so I, I have my core business, which for me is already sustainable because it, actually I met a lady in here who already came up to me and said that She's been buying since 2007, and she still has the product. For me, that's the biggest compliment. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, I bought your product, and now my daughters are wearing my old bikinis that used to be mine. So that's sustainable, you know, and I think that we're all, like, we're all like High Street. There's nothing wrong with High Street. We like, you know, it's very affordable. The biggest issue is convincing clients why the price is higher, because sustainable fabrics are much more expensive today. So they can buy the same product, not sustainable, at a lesser price. How do you do that, Melissa? Are you communicating to the woman at the point of sale or, or, or through the whole supply chain? How do you? The whole process. Now, I love Instagram. I love telling stories. I've already filmed half of Turkey in the last day I've been here. I love sharing experiences, and that's my following loves to see that. So I think it's a story you're selling. What you're selling, it's a luxury product, but you have to show them how you got to that point. So you're creating a story on taking them through. I show them everything from the sewing machines to the recyclable water, and I try and take them together on that journey with me to show them, look, this is as advanced as we are. This is why the product is ex expensive, or the price it is, is because it's a much harder process to become sustainable, but I think the whole world within five years has to become more sustainable. We're all going to be there, so we're going to, you know, all have to, you know, Melissa, it's a tough question, but I'm sure it's going through the minds of the, the business people in our audience, which is, do consumers actually care? No. Or are they, but th no, they don't. No, <laughs> okay. they don't. But maybe they do, and with my brand, because they do think it's sustainable already because they know if it's going to last. And for me, that's already 50% of becoming sustainable is something that, like, you can buy three bikinis in June or three pieces of clothing, and in September, you're throwing them away. Or you buy one good piece, doesn't have to be for my brand, from any brand. And if it lasts you 15 years and you're still going to recycle it by giving it to a secondhand shop or passing it on to the next generation, that's sustainable. I agree. And it's about 
teaching people that quality is much better than quantity. Melissa, in our world, numbers seem to rule the roost. I mean, it's always the numbers. It's the guys with the spreadsheets who seem to force the decision. Um, can a brand truly be both green and profitable? Yes, I mean, I think some of the huge luxury brands from Gucci to Stella McCartney are extremely profitable. They're extremely green or trying to be, or a part of the company is green. Um, yes, as maybe their client doesn't matter, doesn't care so much as paying a little bit premium price, but having a sustainable product. Is green sustainable or is sustainability a part of green? Both. Both. Perfect answer. I want to know this. Fast fashion, you mentioned it just now, mm -hmm. Zara, people buying bulk, people buying and getting rid of and dumping and moving on. It's a big and dominant force in the industry. How do you see the future of sustainable luxury in the broader fashion industry landscape? Well, to be honest, I think the younger generation is making the older generation much more aware of being more sustainable. And there's a lot more voicing out there and there's a lot more social media, which we didn't have before. So the word is getting out there and all the new upcoming brands are sustainable. But sustainable is people are using it on their websites and everything when they're not really sustainable yet. So it's a tricky... Sort of greenwashing. They're gr greenwashing the word sustainable. But I think High Street is becoming much more aware of it and realizing like, okay, we got to follow the big luxury brands and we have to become more sustainable. And are they? Are they following? Yeah, they are. They are. Actually, Balenciaga did a, an entire collection in plant-made, I don't know, uh, fabrics from plants that were completely sustainable. So then, for a brand like yours, which has already got that credential and that yeah. credibility sewn in, um, what about collaborations? How difficult is it to create those? Is that the way forward? Well, five years ago, I was offered sustainable fabrics because I love the oceans. Like, every time someone makes a purchase on my website, I pull plastic bottles out of the ocean. Like, I'm always about giving back, and I'm trying to become as much sustainable. Like, I took all plastic out of my company. Everything's recyclable plastic. But you're only as far as you can get. Like, the technology is not fully there yet. And because I do swimwear, the fabrics offered to me five years ago were made out of corn. You're going to jump in the ocean, you'll come out naked because yeah. it will just, the fabric will disintegrate inside the ocean. So, you know, I have to be careful about which fabric. So I tested and tried, and, you know, three years now I do a collection that's just sustainable, and then I do a collection, a beach collection of dresses from all made in Turkey, the fabrics, all 100% sustainable fabric. You are indeed Turkish. It I makes am sense. Turkish, but then, you know, you have to look at the long run. Okay, I have to fly the fabric into my factories. So, you know, it's all, you can only do so much. What have been some of the most challenging moments? Oh, I could give decisions? you a book on that. No, go <laughs> on. I'd love to hear. Because what I know Brexit. Business. Go on. <laughs> Brexit. There's so many challenging moments. In, in, God, Brexit in, in, was challenging. In starting a business. I mean, you get over COVID and then you get hit by Brexit. So then prices go crazy. And I don't like raising my prices, but gas, electricity, I'm sure also here in Turkey, have skyrocketed. And then you have to, you know, put that into your pricing. And unfortunately, it's coming back down again. But it's very difficult retail today. When the prices from suppliers come back down, how soon is that reflected at the point of sale? Uh, within six months. Well, that's fantastic. Is that because of the seasonal loop? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, we've got a minute, so I'm going to land. That was quick. Okay. I know, God, it flies by, doesn't it? Um, Melissa, what advice would you give to somebody in this room now who's a young entrepreneur, maybe a young designer, looking to embark on a sim similar sustainable luxury journey? Well, I think it's much easier today if you're starting out because there's much more to offer. Like you can buy much more fabrics. You can start out sustainable. It's much harder to not start out sustainable and try and convert your company into being sustainable. So I would say like the biggest advantage to anyone starting today is you have free like um, Instagram, social media, is free. You can put your brand out there and spread the word for free. 
When I started, we had to pay 30, 40,000 for one page in Vogue to advertise. So use social media for your launching your career, launching your, sorry, your career, your brand um, to get it out there and just start off sustainable and become from the core because you're going to have to get there anyway and within the next three years. We will all have to be 100% sustainable. So you might as well start from the beginning. And the final message. I have two seconds. The, for two <laughs> seconds. Melissa Odebash, what do you have to say to the women in this audience? Uh, well, women should always support women. Um, always ask entrepreneurs, don't be scared. Ask them advice. Ask them how they got there. Attend these type of talks. Um, I think women need to support women more. And I never had a mentor, except for my mother. But other than that, I didn't have social media when I started. And it would have been much easier to ask someone, oh, where can I buy fabrics? So don't be scared. Put yourself out there. Ask women. And um, yeah. It's, 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 if, if my Melissa. biggest thing is if you don't try, you'll regret it. So even if you fail, it's okay. Everyone fails. It's okay. Just don't make the same mistakes and start again. Melissa, you're an inspiration. Oh, Melissa Odebash, everybody.